Hi everyone, Bandana here, and I hope you're all doing well. So, this will be this week's dev blog video, but before we get into the dev blog, you can skip ahead to that if you want, I will put a marker in there. I want to talk about all of the bugs that Eugen have added in this patch, because some of them are quite major bugs, and we have a big tournament this weekend. Ideally, they wouldn't have pushed this patch out, but they have, so now we have a load of bugs to deal with, which is less than ideal, especially since some of them are simply borderline game breaking probably game breaking so the first one is to say that they've added the new tandem trait for some of the heat rounds obviously this was a major feature of this patch unfortunately they've implemented it incorrectly so on the tooltip and on all the information they've given us it says any target with era trait suffers plus one hp damage from a tandem missile this is incorrect. They can suffer anywhere between 0.5 and up to 2 additional damage depending on the tandem charge used and the armor of the vehicle. So it's not as simple as just saying plus 1. As ever, the stat card lies and they haven't implemented it properly. The next bug is probably another big one. So they've added the lovely new challenger, which I will bring up now. The lovely new Challenger Mark III, with the ERA, been looking forward to this one, been hoping it would get added. Basically a Challenger Mark II with ERA, the extra armor and stuff. So they've stuck the ERA trait there, they've given it 12 additional, or oh, 2 additional health points, so 12 total I should say, sorry. <laughs> that would be pretty impressive if they gave it 12 additional. Unfortunately, they haven't actually applied the ERA trait to it. So, tandem charges don't do any extra damage, and it's not affected by the other bug that they've introduced. Which I'm now going to take you into a game to show you, because there's no better way to do it. Okay, so, welcome to, well, Death Row. It doesn't really matter what map we do this on. I'm going to grab a T-80B. In fact, I'm going to grab two T-80Bs, and I'm going to grab a T-80BV. Now, the T-80Bs do not have ERA. I'm just going to bring that up. There's the stat card. They don't have ERA. The T-80BV does have ERA, and it is applied. I'm going to move the T-80BV there. I'm going to move that up there, and that over here. And I'm going to hit launch panel. Then I'm going to grab one of these, because I would bring the Uragan, but uh, unfortunately, it has a massive minimum range. I'm also going to bring in some aircraft. I'm going to bring in a cluster bomber. I'm going to bring in a HE bomber. And then once we get some more cash, I'll bring in some more stuff. We're just going to hit fast speed. Because speed is good. Clearly, I think I'm Jeremy Clarkson. So what I'm going to do is, while we're waiting for some cash, I'm going to take the uh, artillery piece, right? And I'm just going to do this. So this is a T-80BV. It has ERA. And what they've done is changed these to now take the additional damage from tandem charges. But they now take zero damage from any source of HE. Any HE. Including cluster bombers. Yeah. Now let's get a cluster in. And just target that. I also want a laser guard bomber. Yep, that's zero damage, and you know the other thing? No cohesion loss. Zero cohesion loss. Yeah. Uh, let's bring in the HE bomber. Let's grab a napalm as well. In fact, we'll just have them come in one after the other. We don't even need to mess around with this. HE bomber's done. Laser got a bomber next. It'll probably move from the flames, but... Yeah, I'm just going to sail over there, and let's hit it with this. So any tank with the ERA trait, except for the Challenger Mark III, is invulnerable to HE damage. So the T-80UD is going to be an absolute beast roaming across the map, smashing everything. But just to prove that this isn't like some friendly fire thing where I can't damage my own units, I'm just going to, you know, casually bomb 
There's a guy, a bomber coming around for another pass. Just gonna casually bomb these guys. Maybe we uh, drop some arty on there as well. Why not? Tank badly damaged and has taken cohesion loss. And this one will take minor damage and cohesion loss. And there's got a bomber in, shall we? Make sure that works. I mean, I have no doubt about whether it works or not, to be honest. So, for the tournament this weekend, be aware that you cannot kill ERA tanks unless they rush out a fix, which we have requested, but whether we get that is a different matter. I doubt it. Um, so, for the tournament this weekend, unless we get another option, um, all... ERA tanks, except for the Mark III, the Challenger Mark III, will be invulnerable to all HE damage. Um, so obviously, anyone with ERA tanks will be very, very strong. Obviously, that applies to all ERA tanks, so uh, the T-62 can come in as well. Speed that up so it comes in really quickly. The T-62 MV, another ERA tank that actually has ERA applied. Um will have the same issue. I, I'm afraid I can't really... I don't think I can show you the tandem charges. Um, and I can't really demonstrate to you which ones will do 0 0.5 and which ones will do an additional 2 damage to the ERA tanks. So I apologise. That is... Uh, unfortunate. So, cluster bomber on this. And laser guard bomber. There you go. Now, the other thing to mention is... If we can pause the game quickly. Pause it there. The, all of the guns on the aircraft have been standardized. So, they all fire the same, regardless of how much ammo they have, etc, etc, etc. So, there are some machine... Some... Um, cannons, sorry, on the aircraft, such as the Vulcan cannon which has a lot of ammo and now just wrecks stuff because it continues to fire and it has the burst, it has everything. So the standardization across those weapons has completely changed how aircraft work and engage with stuff. Something else to bear in mind. Again, I can't really show you unless I bring an AI in and happen to be able to engage with the cannons on stuff. There's no guarantee I can do that, obviously, so just something to bear in mind. But let's go through the actual dev blog, and then we'll go through the patch notes at the end of the dev blog, and I'll remind everybody of what is not correct in there. All right, everyone, let's get into the actual dev blog with the history and everything, and then we'll do the patch notes, and we'll go over all of the bugs again. So, as you gen tradition, each one or milestone is named after a notable Napoleonic war commander, specifically a French marshal. So, we're going to talk about Monsey, one of the oldest marshals in Napoleon's retinue. Most of Monsey's field career was before or during the early Revolutionary Wars, where he distinguished himself well with his expert command, especially when fighting against Spain. After supporting Napoleon's coup in 1799, he continued to briefly serve as a field commander in Italy. Afterwards, Monsey was associated with the French military police which he commanded until pretty much the end, a tricky command used as a counterweight to the ever-scheming Minister of Police. Monse reported to only Napoleon himself, who would accompany the Emperor on most of his campaigns, keeping order within the rear of the Grande Army. As such, he would be the only military police leader to be elevated to marshal status. They have a little subheading here, Let's go home to die. An experienced commander, Monse briefly returned to the battlefield to command troops, especially during the early stages of the Peninsular War. He was also one of the few marshals to oppose the Russian invasion. When France was invaded in 1814, Monse rose to the occasion, fighting one of the last battles just outside of Paris. After Napoleon's abdication, Monse pledged himself to Louis. Although loyal to his new sovereign, our marshal did not take up arms when Napoleon campaigned in the Hundred Days' War. Still punished with house arrest, Monse escaped the harshest of sentences. 
as one of the remaining surviving marshals, Monse was present when Napoleon's ashes were brought back to France in 1840 to be interned, gravely ill and in a wheelchair pumped full of medicine to attend the ceremony. The 86-year-old commander kissed the hilt of Napoleon's sword. He was recorded as saying when leaving, now let's go home to die. Okay, so what is in the milestone? Well, there is a new Operation Sledgehammer, there is a new 10v10 variant of Danger Hills, there are some new units, there is a Bradley IFV rework, and various balance changes. Let's take a look now at Operation Sledgehammer. So the next subheading, Operation Sledgehammer, a brand new operation that can be found in Milestone Monse. With the Warsaw Pact focused sledgehammer, this operation, the Soviet 8th Guards Army, has reached Hanau on the outskirts of Frankfurt am Main on the third day of the invasion. With NATO's resolve stiffening along the central axis of advance, and the Soviets are eager not to let up their attack, it is on the 57th Guards Motor Rifle Division to clear the NATO outpost from Hanau. They need to breach the defensive lines to allow for exploitation forces from the 79th Guards Tank Division to take this small city. The Sledgehammer operation is a combined arms mission in which you are given additional tactical choice on which forces you want to commit. The battle takes place in front of the main river with various positions that your combat engineers and motorized riflemen must breach. You start the mission as Zvezda 11 before being given the choice to finish off the pesky NATO defenders as either the infantry based Select 65 or with tanks as the Molot 07. In Operation Sledgehammer, expect ambushes, staunch West German and American defenders, and a grueling multi pronged battle to open the way to Hanau. Next up is the new Danger Hills 10v10 map. We continue on a quest to give you more 10v10 maps to play with. One of our efforts is to adapt existing 3v3 maps to be played on a 10 vs 10 scale. This is not as easy as reformatting the command zones, but involves redesigning the AI to best learn the new maps. Danger Hills will have a redesigned deployment zones as well as the aforementioned updated AI logic. Next up are the new units, Soviet BMD series vehicles, We'll see both fixes to existing models and the addition of several new variants. BMD vehicles, as they were depicted in Warno, lacked missile launchers, although the BMD-1 could have had one or not, depending on the variant, and by default the BMD-2 was built featuring one. We have fixed this omission. There is a new BMP-1D variant with the Factoria missile launcher, and they updated the existing BMD-2 to feature a Conkers missile launcher. We also took the opportunity to add some command versions of both vehicles, the BMD-1K and the BMD-2K. The updated BMD-2 replaces the older model with a price adjustment. The BMD-1P has been added as a new transport option to the Soviet 35th Airborne. The other major unit addition will surely please our British fans. Yes, I'm finally pleased to see it in the game. You guys let us know that the 1st Armoured Division was the first one to receive the State of the Art Challenger Mark III with added ERA armour. Please note that this is the Challenger 1 Mark III, not its successor introduced in the late 90s. This new British unit and brand new model has slightly more side armour than the Mark II and receives the ERA trait granting it the plus 2 HP. Consider the Challenger Mark III a worthier target for the plentiful Soviet tandem charge ATGMs that before could only explode to their fullest potential on the AMX-30 B2 Brennus. I'm just going to interject and remind everybody that this is incorrect. As it stands right now, the ERA trait has not been correctly applied to the Challenger Mark III, and it does not take any additional damage from the tandem ATGMs. It just takes standard damage. It is basically a tank with two extra HP at the moment. Okay, moving back, they're now talking about balance changes. So, to represent the Warsaw Pact Doctrine more closely, the vehicles transporting ATGMs have been reworked. This also means that your decks might need to be updated, so keep this in mind after today's update rolls out. This change will affect both Soviet and East German decks. The FAGOT and METIS ATGMs were only able to be found in the BTR regiments. The BMP regiments had enough firepower with their IFVs, and organic armament of ATGMs, therefore the FAGOT AGM teams and the Motostrelki Metis will be restricted to the soft skin vehicles or wheeled APCs. These are either Jeeps, trucks or the BTR-60 or BTR-80. 
On the other hand, the Conker's ATGM teams will be locked to either the UAZ Jeep or tracked APCs and IFVs. Another major change concerns the 39th Guards Motor Rifle Division. The division is overperforming thanks to its rather healthy complement of BMP3s. These state-of-the-art IFVs were, as a matter of fact, still very rare, with historically only a battalion worth having been delivered to the Soviet 8th Guards Army in East Germany. To balance this, we have restricted the BMP3 to the Motostrelki Commander and the new Motostrelki RPG-22 squad. The latter unit will replace the two cards of existing Motostrelki BMP in the division. In this way, the new BMP-3 will be limited in number, but still be a force to be reckoned with, comparable to the equally modern, but more numerous in real life, M2A2 Bradley. Next up are the Bradley IFV changes. As we are on the topic of the Bradley IFV, a reminder that in this milestone we included the changes coming to this series of vehicles. Some of the 3rd Armoured Fire Team squads will get access to the up-armoured TOW 2A armed M2A2 Bradley. Half of the 3rd Armoured's M2A1 Bradley CP cards will be replaced with the new M2A2 Bradley CP, that's command vehicles, and half of the 11th Armoured Cavalry Regiment's Recon M3A1 Bradley will be replaced with the new M3A2 Bradley CFV. And that's everything for this week, guys. Remember that there is a tournament this weekend, which is going to be interesting with the bugs in this patch. Let's actually go into the full patch notes now, and I'll read through them, and we will go over where those bugs are once more. Okay, so the patch notes, guys. Features added new configurable hotkeys to switch to idle units. You'll have to have a look at that in the options. I can't remember what it is. Addition of two new configurable hotkeys to manage the sub-selection of units, units by units, or units by types. Again, check the options. Uh, added the new tandem trait for some heat rounds. Each time such a round hits a vehicle with the ERA trait, it deals plus one damage, representing tandem charges being designed to negate ERA. Against non-ERA vehicles, the round works as usual. Adding my own addition to the patch notes, this is incorrect. This will currently deal 0.5 all the way up to plus 2 damage to the ERA tanks, depending on the ERA tank's armor and the tandem charge used. Feel free to experiment with that in-game. However, just so you're aware, those that get the tandem charge are the Panzer Force 3, the RPG-7 VR, the RPG-27, the RPG-29, the 9K-121 Vikir, the 9M-121 Conkers M, the 9M-128 Agona, and the TOW 2A. Operation Sledgehammer has been added, and a new version for 10v10 of Danger Hills has been added. There has been some adjustments to HE and HMG weapon damage to helicopters, they now take a lot more damage from HMG and HE damage weapons. And also there has been some adjustments, which I'm not sure are mentioned here, to the cannons of planes, which means that they all now have some kind of flat rate of fire, and therefore they do more damage to helicopters because of both the HE HMG weapon damage change, and also the fact that they're now all doing the same rate of fire. They have fixed some of the buildings being indestructible. You may have noticed that some of the high tower buildings were previously indestructible or the infantry inside them couldn't be damaged. They now can be damaged, but I think the amount of damage they get is really high compared to other buildings. So keep that in mind. I haven't managed to test that myself as yet because ideally I'd want to test it against another player. They have increased the vanilla RPG-7's penetration heat from 13 to 14 and renamed it the RPG-7 VM. They say they have fixed the optics on several command units, the BMD-1, BMD-2, BMP-2, FV-432, the Saxon, which have all been set to normal on par with their counterparts. Okay, on to the changes for the NATO forces. Increased the M1 Abrams command base veterancy from VET-1 to VET-2 on par with other similar command tanks. Standardized the Chaparral's VET ratio to 4 to one for some reason, they have also omitted the change where they have increased the Chaparral's missile quantity to 12 from 4, though they haven't changed the price or anything at this point in time. They have changed the 
P4 PC Stealth from Bad to Mediocre on par with other CV Jeeps. They have changed the VBL PC Stealth from Bad to Mediocre on par with other CV Jeeps. And they have changed the Rover CP's Stealth from Bad to Mediocre on par with other CV Jeeps. American MP units now have proper MP models. Introduction of the M2A2 Bradley IFV and M3A2 Bradley CFV with improved stats and price plus a TOR 2A tandem charge missile. The 11th ACR, as we've mentioned, swapping one card of M3A1 Bradley CFV for one of M3A2. Back to the first British Armoured, which has added the new Challenger Mark III and decreased the Challenger Mark II's number of cards from 6 to 5. A reminder here that it does not have the ERA trait correctly applied, and although it has two extra health, aka 12 health in total, it does not take additional damage from tandem charges, and it does not have the complete invulnerability from HE damage and clusters that the other ERA tanks have. The 3rd Armoured Division, they have swapped one card of M2A1 Bradley Leader with one card of M2A2, adding the M2A2 Bradley IFV as a transport option to Fireteam Dragon and Fireteam Leader. Over on the side of the Pact Forces, they have locked the 2S3M1 at Vet 1, they have locked the MI24VAA at Vet 2, they have added a DSHV Rifles and Command with a Shock Trait, They've increased the BMP 2D's rear armor by plus one. There is a new BMD 2 model, including the Conker's launcher added, and price changed accordingly. They have restricted the Motostrelki Medus to wield Gaz or the BTR 60 or 80. They've restricted the Soviet Conker's team to wield UAZ and the BMP 1P. They've restricted the East German Conker's team to wield UAZ, SPW 70, and the SPW 152. They've restricted the Soviet FAGOT team to wield UAZ and BTR-60 or 80 transports. They've restricted the East German FAGOT team to wield UAZ, SPW-50 and SPW-1s. The SU-24 MP speed has been set to 1,023 hour, like the other variants. Specific changes per division, the 27th GMSD increased the 2S3M1's base vet from 1 to 2, renamed the KRAZ 255B. For the 35th, they have added the BMD 1P with 80 GM as a transport option. The 35th, they've also added one card of MiG 29 AA2. The 39th, they've removed the SPG 9's forward deployment trait, which was a mistake. They've replaced two cards of BMP Motostrelki with the same number of new Motostrelki RPG-22 and restricted the access of the BMP-3 as a transport option to Motostrelki Commander and Motostrelki RPG-22 only. The 79th Guards Tank Division, they have changed the T-80BV IZD-29's base availability from 4 to 3 but with plus 1 vet level. And for all DDR, they have decreased the Motsuchin SMG's number of cards from 4 to 1 on par with Soviet divisions. And that is everything they've listed here. Once again, though, I'm going to list out the bugs just so everybody is aware of them. Again, this is a public service announcement because we have a big tournament this weekend. Many thanks again to Nalid for helping make a full list of these bugs. The Challenger Mark III has plus 2 HP for having ERA, but does not actually have the ERA trait, and therefore doesn't take additional damage from the tandem charges and isn't invulnerable. Tandem charges being advertised to do plus one damage compared to heat rounds. However, they actually do anywhere between 0.5 and plus two damage. ERA tanks are completely immune to anything that is not heat, tandem or KE damage. So they are immune to clusters. They are immune to HE bombs. They are immune to napalm. They are immune to artillery. They are immune to cluster artillery. You get where I'm going with this. Plane guns have now been standardized to their rate of fire, so a Vulcan not only has sustained damage with 115 ammo compared to the 20 or 25 of the Morza and DEFA, but it also has the burst damage that used to be the strong point of those last two. This means that they do do more damage against helicopters at least. The new BMD with the Conkers only have 8 ammo or 4 salvo total with their PKT and also deplete the ATGM ammo by firing it. You cannot deactivate the PKT because it's not on the unit. 
So basically they are sharing an ammo supply. And that is finally everything for this week. Thank you everyone for watching or listening. I hope you all have a great weekend. Please do come and join us for the tournament. I'm sure it'll be fun even with these ridiculous bugs that have been added to the game. It's just a real shame. <laughs>